very tingly, very tingly. That's stressing everything right now. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> What's up guys, uh, this is, I think it might be the second strength workout we're doing. I'm not entirely sure the order, but this is the world's longest swim series where we're gonna be talking about strength training. So how I'm gonna be conditioning my body strength prehab leading into the longest non-stop lake swim in Loch Ness. Uh, so uh, today, today's a bit of a weird one because it's, I suppose physiologically, it's, it's shoulder strength but it's kind of not because biomechanically what we're trying to do is replicate the swim stroke ever so slightly and also build these bulletproof shoulders. So although it is shoulders, it's kind of a bit of chest, it's kind of replicating swim stroke. Not really sure what to call it. Swimming strength, swim strong, Poseidon power. That sounds quite good, doesn't it, man? That's delightful. Poseidon power. That's also a tongue twister for you. That is, so the other one was silverback swimming strength this is poseidon power trident triceps <laughs> i just like alliteration there we go <laughs> it's all right together. that's what's going down um also as we discovered i have never i've not been this light in so long so uh the physique that i've built brilliant if i was doing an ocean conservation swim in australia which was originally planned i'm now not doing that it's in scotland quite different just in terms of temperature. And as we were discussing, Ben, that really calls for, well, millionaire shortbread. I've just got a license now to bulk. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Look. How much do you need to put on? About we six kilos in about three weeks. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. I've taken quite a large mouthful there. I instantly regret it. <laughs> oh my God. Mm. We were talking about this. We don't really know how much to put on. So I need to put on body fat because that's insulating. Muscle mass thermic generates heat. How much? I don't know because I'm moving so well in the water at the moment, but it's such a fine line between being lean and fast, but fast can be fragile, or being slow and strong, where you're just big and, and bulky and more resilient. So I, I don't know, but I just know that this isn't gonna last very long in Loch Ness. You also have to fit into the wetsuit because they're making you a custom wetsuit. That is a very good point. That is a very good point, yes. And not only that as well, it starts to get real intricate because obviously we were talking about this, you could just go like crazy, like eight mil suit, but then there's no mobility. And also as well, you're kind of turning yourself into a kayak. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's kind of not in the spirit of swimming but you don't want it to be too thin. So it's, it's really, that's a really good point that what we're creating at Gymshark is kind of, it's gotta be a fusion of tech, pioneering swim wetsuit tech with actually strength and conditioning your body and body composition. It's, and, and, and it's all got to work over, well, three weeks. <laughs> You've chosen a long time to do this in. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so today, shoulder strength, which you're going to be joining me again, aren't you? Yes, I am. We're going to be jumping in. Um, we, we've been discussing, I thought I should probably bring this up as well, because I thought I had a lot of caffeine throughout the day until I met Ben. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I typically will try and probably have, well, I really try to limit it. Uh, I'll probably have a, 100 milligrams maybe, which is like a half a scoop, one scoop PhD charge. Um, also as well, I'm having so much beta alanine at the moment. I won't, so, so caffeine, we were talking about this as well, because obviously Ben, sports science background, sports nutrition background as well. I love caffeine just because of this idea of like improving the ionic environment within the working muscle, um, neurotransmitters, chemical signals in the, the brain, so your perception to fatigue, um, sparing muscle glycogen, so many benefits to it as long as you use it properly. I think you can abuse caffeine. A lot of people just every single workout become dependent upon it. So that's caffeine. But then also as well, I've been smashing beta alanine a lot at the moment. A lot of people go, oh, that's the one that is really tingly. And I think people will take that before a workout and go, I can feel it happening. It's like, well, no, 
there's a loading phase. So how beta alanine works is it forms with L-histidine, another amino acid, to form carnosine in the muscles that buffers lactic acids, so that burning sensation that you get. So amazing for like a 400 meter run, 200 meter freestyle in the pool. Um, and I, I've used it for so long, works really well with creatine as well, which is obviously looking to improve the molecular energy of the muscles, so ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So you kind of get those two just improving the, almost the biochemistry of the muscles themselves. Um, I know I say all of this while eating a millionaire short, <laughs> but that's why you'll see me punching a lot of PhD charge pre-workout, but also having some additional beta alanine on that. Um, I think that's everything. So this is world's longest swim, shoulder strength, Poseidon power, trident triceps, specific workout, all supplemented on quite a lot of caffeine and millionaires short bed. Right, go, go. This is really subtle. So it's that real proprioception, just kinesthetic awareness. Only you will really know if it's working, but driving through the hands, driving through the elbows, it's replicating that swim stroke, but actually driving with those lower traps, engaging the lats. So this was taught to me actually by um, John O'Freeman, absolute legend who was the Chinese Olympic swimming team head physio and helped so much on my shoulder rehab and this was one as well that he taught me because you're just getting strong in the end range so you can do it double hand and then you go unilateral so hand behind the back here and you're adding a little bit of thoracic extension in here as well again driving through the hand driving through the elbow up squeeze up squeeze Again, said principle, specific adaptation to impose demands. Good, big man, let's go. Yes. Just getting strong in that end range, really good. Yes, yeah, switch it on, switch it on. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Nice, big man, other side. Let's try it with a better arm. Let's go, let's go. Yes, good. I was just saying this to Ben as well, it's just gonna be nice to leave with a few more you know, sort of PBs and metrics of success that a lot of people, you know, squat, bench, deadlift, watch your one RM, watch your 100 meter sprint. And it's just gonna be nice to go, oh, well, range of motion in sort of end range of a, of a propulsive swimming stroke. Do you know what I mean? Add, add some more things to your arsenal. I can safely say I've never done this before. <laughs> you legend, legend. You mm. might, you've probably seen these, haven't you? I've seen you do these before, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Who hasn't seen you do these before? No, I know, I love it. Again, this was one. So it was John O. Freeman and then also uh, Jeff Ross as well, like both like physios, heroes, who coached me after my shoulder surgery. And again, this is that concentric phase of the arm stroke, but also eccentric phase when you're catching it. So if you think about the, the forces that your shoulder joint, that you're asking of it, it's just amazing for build, building those bulletproof shoulders. First few, just eight, nice and easy. Shoulder all the way back here, aren't you? Yeah, 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 that's here. it, that's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so up. really, yeah, that's perfect. Start off so, so like, barely, barely leaves your hand, barely leaves your hand. And as you build yeah. a little bit of coordination, it's gonna be such a novel movement for someone, exactly, <laughs> who doesn't do this. It's such a weird movement. It is, and it's also sort of like catching in the peripheral. Yeah, yeah. Which is, uh, for someone who's uncoordinated like myself, a little harder to do. <laughs> it's not. And the idea of throwing a weight close to the face. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 is, no, no, uh, you'll, be, you'll catch it, it won't hit your face. Or it doesn't hurt that much if it is your face. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what's important is you're catching it with the arm moving yeah, down, yeah, aren't you? Yeah. Whereas I'm trying to catch it arm up here. Yeah, no, but that's so. fine. For the first few, as you build confidence. There you go, there you go. Just give me three more and then change hands. Good, good. We're still working the shoulder joint over a range of motion that it's never done before. And that's what's important. Oh, coordination with the left arm. Now you're asking 
That's it. There Far you go. Far too much. There you go. <laughs> this is the thing. The shoulder joint works kind of basically over almost 360 degrees, but we're only ever using it pressing or delt raises. So it's going to be really nice today that, that Ben's shoulders just kind of leave going, what was that? <laughs> There you go. And then the last few. <laughs> lost it. That is some skill. <laughs> no. I lost oh, it. That couldn't have gone much worse. <laughs> so just three now and try and get it to leave your hand. And if you drop it, it doesn't matter. On the left heart. Oh. Yeah, because even if you miss it, it's a concentric contraction. There you go. Yes, 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 yes. I'm blaming the fact there's a big ass light right here. No, I know, I thought that. <laughs> That's my excuse. Oh. Good. Blame the light. Even if you're even if you're not catching it, don't worry, because it's just the, it's the concentric contraction that you're doing. Actually, I can feel that in my chest already, even though there's very little light load. Right, it's yeah. It's through motion that probably hasn't been put through before. That's a really good point, though, because it's like force equals mass times acceleration. So to manipulate force, most people just add mass. Whereas what we're doing is actually improving the acceleration. So instead of doing a, a strong pullover, you're actually throwing, so it's speed. We're manipulating that part of the equation. And also, inherently, you are contracting the muscle up top. Yeah. And then as you're then waiting for load to leave and then gain again on that eccentric motion, it's actually... Exactly. It's a lot eccentrically. You're right. Yeah. You're going, oi! And we'll just work, we'll work up. Again, there's loads of different ways to do these. And it's... Um, if you're a bodybuilder, there'll be a certain way because you're trying to build the chest. It's almost old school, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's just like you see Arnie, just that like stretch. Whereas it's slightly different, I think, for a swimmer because you're just trying to get strong in the end range. Again, it's just strong strength. It's not actually hypertrophy that I'm after. Four. Did I have this? 40, uh, 40. Did I have 40? 40, yes. I'm a better swimmer than I am at maths. <laughs> that, that, well, <laughs> that bodes actually very well. <laughs> that does work well. Actually moved better than the 40 did. It did, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think as well, probably just worth pointing out that that variation as well. I'm trying to get strong in the end range, so it's that propulsion phase. Whereas a lot of bodybuilders watching this will be like, yo, you want to squeeze at the top. So it goes back to what we said, said principle, specific adaptation to impose demands. What are you actually training for? Because I think sometimes people think there's one set way of doing things. And certainly with pullovers, I'm trying to get strong in the end range, not build a 1980s classical bodybuilding chest. <laughs> no, that Although comes, that would be nice. Yeah, that just comes uh, as <laughs> a bonus, really, doesn't it? What do you think, big dog? Uh, let's do... You smoked the last uh, one. Let's do 40, why not? I think we should. Let's do a 40. This is the, uh, the interesting part, isn't it? It is awkward, isn't it? Ben. Good, 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 good. Let's go, let's go. Good. Good, 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 good. Let's go. Nice. Comfortable. 
Yeah, actually. I might, I might do the 45 again. <laughs> you really? sounded so right. I might bring it up a little bit. <laughs> So I'm gonna do the 45s now. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe we'll touch the 50. Good, Ben. Good, good, good. What do you think she's singing about in this song? <laughs> That's a really, really interesting question. Because female singers actually tend to have a very distinctive kind of um, selection of topics they can talk about. <laughs> so. <laughs> so in terms of limiting factors for obviously the swim, if it's 60 hours, what are you gonna do about sleep? Yeah, you, you know what, that's what's interesting. When you start looking at these non-stop swims, I always find it's, it's not about like cardiorespiratory endurance, it's not about lactic threshold, you know, not even about swim stroke. It's, um, that's not what's gonna give up. When, you, when you're 60 hours in, you're not gonna go, I wish I had a bigger VO2. It's like, no, it's, I'm sleep deprived, I'm hallucinating, I can't take on any more food, so therefore everything's grinding to a halt. It's those things. So I almost say with these sorts of, sorts of swims, it's the strategic management of suffering. It's not stamina. You know, you're, you're just trying to put out fires that it's like sleep. Okay, punch some caffeine, has that helped? Okay, now uh, everything's cramping. Okay, electrolytes, hydration. Okay, um, now, it, you know, and it, everything. And, and that's what I find so interesting about the record. And so far with all your swims, what's the longest you've gone without sleep or in general? Have you? <laughs> that, that is a weird story. So when I did my 48 hour swim with the Royal Marines, I, I was actually up a lot longer than 48 hours because we had to do a little bit of press and a bit of charity work beforehand. So, so I had about six hours of doing press and charity stuff before. Then I did the 48 hour swim. And then this is where it gets really weird. All of the Royal Marines, absolute legends. They were all like, oh Ross, there's a really good deal on a carvery. So should we go and get a Sunday roast? And I was like, yeah. But then before that, we also did a squat session because all the guys were powerlifting. So they said like upper body, lower body. <laughs> so in total, I think I was up for closer to 70 hours with a 48 hour swim, with a carvery and squat session. So that's why, <laughs> that's why in a really weird way, when we had this idea for the non-stop swim, I was like, I wonder what I can do. Like I said, the whole thing is a Trojan horse, it's for charity, it's for ocean conservation. That is the purpose. Talisker and Parley protecting 100 square million meters of marine ecosystems by 2023. However, the sports scientist in me is, is thinking, mm. <laughs> I feel that your entire life is just, how far can I push my body? <laughs> I just, I in every way possible, <laughs> which is amazing. I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think that's kind of like your calling. You're just like, how can I possibly, what, what can I do next? And then yeah. like, oh, here's my limit. Let's go past it. Do you know what? I love that you said that though, because I, I think um, Jordan Peterson, so clinical psychologist, I, I love his stuff. And one thing that always resonated with me when he just said, you know, the purpose in life is to pick up the heaviest load you can and carry it. And I think for me, I, that I've done that 48 hour swim and I, I finished, but then I ended up having a carvery. We ended up squatting and we did a leg session. So I'm like, so 48 hours wasn't the heaviest load I could carry. Do, may, maybe Loch Ness will offer a load that I'm like, right, that, you, you know. Well, the beauty about Loch Ness is there's a goal, but you can surpass it and then you can set your own target. 
That's a really good point. So you could go <laughs> 160, 170, <laughs> and 80. You could hit that 200. Oh, I mean, <laughs> you know how much. <laughs> yeah, that is, yeah. Do you know what? You're, you're right. Like that is, that is unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm not sure how my mind would work. But I think it would be like, oh, what's next? <laughs> what's, what's the most I could possibly put into it? And yeah. that, there is no limit on that because it is a, the goal is ever changing. After you've, after you've hit mm. that target, mm. it is just you versus how hard you want it. Yeah. Which is going to be really, really fun to see what you do. Yeah, that's it. And that's it. I, I just want to finish and go, you know, what, you know intrinsically when you just go, I couldn't have done much more. I could, and, and, and I go home and I go, that was it. I didn't have much more. That, that, I, I would like to find that and feel that. That would be nice. I think a fear of, not that I, I think it will happen, but if I left going, I had more in the tank. That's not good. I, can't, I think it was Vince Lombardi, the, the American uh, coach, and he said something like, you know, to, to just leave everything out on the field, you know, that, that is the ultimate kind of expression of, of any athlete. And I think it's uh, not the field, the lock. <laughs> leave it out on the lock. <laughs> So you've got some sort of torture device now. <laughs> this is never pleasant. There's, there's, there's nowhere to hide. A lot of people have seen me using these on, on social media, but um, I need to give a shout out. So this is Katsu. So this is blood restriction training, occlusion training. But this was, uh, who got me onto this was um, Steve Monotones, who's uh, president of the World Open Water Swimming Association. Absolute legend, just swimming guru. And he uses this with a lot of the elite swimmers. Uh, he told me a statistic that was crazy that the number of elite Olympic swimmers who are using this, if they were a country, they would be top in the medal table at the Olympics. It was, it was something amazing. But anyway, the theory behind occlusion training is essentially, um, with, with blood restriction training, imagine, so we're, we're gonna be doing tricep push downs. What's happening is you're asking the triceps, the muscle to work. So it's working, reps, reps, reps. And the muscles kind of go, hang on, but there's no blood. So if there's no blood, there's no oxygen. So as a result, they almost, switch off the slow twitch fibers which require oxygen and start to switch on the fast twitch fibers which are actually more powerful they're your fast twitch fibers which are needed for strength and power so you're targeting them also as well there is a theory that at the same time you're accumulating lactic acid because it's just sitting in the muscles at the same time so you're encouraging and improving the body's ability to actually tolerate lactic which some studies theorize or might, might have proven, or they theorise, I don't know if it's conclusive, that they spike growth hormone as a result at the same time. But there's some amazing studies. If I can find all of them, there's a huge journal on them, and I can actually put these in the, in the comments for anybody who's interested. Uh, but the other thing that I really like about this training is, um, when looking at a training adaptation, um, a lot of people will just use like more weight, more volume. Uh, more speed, whereas this is just a different training stimulus. And I think that's what's quite nice in that you don't have to go as heavy because it's a, like I said, lactic accumulation, like that, that, that horrible, almost um, like a bio, biochemical response in the muscles, really. Um, so yeah, with all of that said, it, this isn't gonna be pleasant. 20 reps, 10 seconds rest, uh, five sets repeated, and your training the muscle's ability to tolerate lactic in many ways. And mental training probably as well. It's gonna be painful. That's true, it's not pleasant. <laughs> it's not pleasant. Why are you, ah, oh, here we go. Oh, already. Is it hurting already? A little bit. <laughs> The first one's always okay, but, oh. Already my triceps know what's happening. Yeah, you're also doing a lot of weight, which is um, the combination, which is probably not nice. Yeah, no, I, I, that, that was punchy already. I was like, that was ambitious. <laughs> my triceps, what are you doing? <laughs> Oh. 
luckily, your tricep is probably, where, where most people say it's two thirds of their arm, I think yours is probably <laughs> four fifths. <laughs> oh, you're crazy. It's the hugest tricep ever. <laughs> I do just have like chubby bingo wings. Yeah, Ooh, I think that is. I'm not sure they're chubby. <laughs> Big old chubby bingo wings. <laughs> Two more sets. Oh, there's nowhere to rest. Oh. So localized, like the, the pain is so localized. Oh, look. Ten seconds on the last set. Oh. Birthday triceps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's very tingly, very tingly. It's the beta amyline. That's all it is. Oh. <laughs> Pump of the god. Come on. <clears throat> Try them triceps. Let's go. I'm going to throw in this because I think it'd be nice for your birthday. But just an isometric hold. I love how you're doing this for my birthday. That's uh, <laughs> very kind of you. Another set. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Lewis, do you do these? Oh, they're disgusting. Are they? Oh, fancy. Look at that. That is disgusting. That is disgusting. You can see like the blood coming back ever so slightly now, so you can actually There's see it working. There's a definite difference between here <laughs> and there. <laughs> Oh. pigment of the skin. That's actually, that's actually crappy. Uh, but yeah, that, what I was just talking about there, you could probably see it towards the end. That, I mean, please, I apologize for any technique for anybody watching, but that's kind of not the point. It's not, it's not mechanical tension. It, it, mechanical tension in that like, you're not trying to just shift more weight. It's actually just shutting your eyes and praying and just kind of just there, just like burning out, embracing that burning sensation. Like I said, it's more, biochemical than it is biomechanic, if that makes sense. It's just kind of like tense, and then you're like, oh, it's a bit more on the left, a bit more on the right. It needs more on both. Probably a little bit more on the left. Cool. It, it shouldn't feel like, it's oh my God. Left smaller, that's why. It, it shouldn't feel like it's cut it off completely yet, but you should go, oh, okay, that's a bit punchy. Yeah, that's fine. Punchy, yeah. yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. I know. Why? <laughs> Yes, okay. 10 seconds, nice, nice, nice. Eight, seven, six, five, I know, four, three. I can't straight in the arm. Two. <laughs> Extension at the bottom. There I'm you go. Try. I know, oh, let's, go. let's go, let's go. Yes. Oh, beast, beast. <laughs> can I take this off now? <laughs> you can. Oh. <laughs> Jeez. Happy birthday. Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> that wasn't happy. <laughs> at all. You're a legend. Oh. <laughs> it's different, right? Yes. There's a reason why most people don't do this. <laughs> I think what's cool as well is, you know on a day where you're like, I can't go heavy, there's no mechanical tension. Well, it's a different training stimulus. You go, oh no, but I could, I could do that. It's horrible. 
Yeah. But it's not stressing your central nervous system as much. That's stressing everything right now. <laughs> I don't know whether to bend my arm or not. <laughs> So um, I am full of millionaire shortbread. <laughs> so we've um, just finished up. Like I said, this whole thing is kind of shoulder strength prehab in many ways. And what I always love to do is a bear crawl, kind of like a bear crawl gauntlet, I think is, is what you do. So you're just accumulating slightly more volume. So you'd bring it out five meters, reverse it five meters, 10 meters, reverse it, 15, reverse it all the way to the end, just because down at Gymshark, we've got this epic little kind of runway sort of catwalk. It's a runway, not a catwalk. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> walk. Um, so I'll go, you go, I'll go, you go. Birthday bear crawls. <laughs> birthday bear crawls, there it is. Birthday bear crawls with Ben. <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you what, that is punchy after triceps. <laughs> it's the reverse that is cheeky. <laughs> so just breathe and pace. Good, Ben. Good. It's a lot longer on the way back, isn't it? Oh, it really is. It really, you don't have to shut your eyes and just make peace with it. Fifty meters. There and back. Okay, done. Um, so that was part of the strength series for the world's longest swim prep. Uh, like I said, it was kind of shoulder specific, kind of swim stroke specific. Um, hope you enjoyed it as strength prehab continues. As I always say, like and subscribe. This is the biggest series I've ever done. Uh, we don't know how long we're gonna swim on the world's longest non-stop swim, uh, but I hope it's good. No, that's it. I mean, it will be good. It, it will. There's no question about it. it will. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be good. <laughs> Maybe. Yes. No, you're right. It will be good. It will be good. You should subscribe. It's a good idea. Um, we're now going to go and eat. We're going to chow down. And then this talk of a birthday workout with Ben might be some sled suicides. We'll work out of the three of the day. <laughs>